One of the great things about algebra is that as we continue to move on, we develop new ways to answer old problems. And the great thing about that is that, you know, in the, the last example that I showed you, we could find the vertex and we can find the intercepts by graphing. We can look at the graph and determine where they are, usually. But we don't have to do that all the time. If I just ask you for the vertex and I just ask you for the intercepts, can you do it without graphing? And the answer is yes, you can. The formula for finding the vertex of a parabola. Well, we need to make sure, first of all, that our quadratic function is in this general standard form that we're used to, where we have all of the terms, the x squared term, the x term, and the um, constant term, all on the same side, and we have a function that's being defined in terms of those terms. So that's what we need to make sure it's in this general form, and you may also hear me call it standard form. Once it's in standard form, we need to look at the coefficients, and we remember these as a, b, and c. My a is 2, my b is 8, and my c is 6. And the formula for finding the x-coordinate, the x-coordinate of the vertex, and remember the vertex is going to have two coordinates, an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, because we're graphing it on a, a rectangular coordinate system. So to find the x-coordinate, we use the formula, the opposite of b over 2a. And you may recognize that as two pieces of the quadratic formula. And they are the pieces that aren't connected at all with the square root part of the quadratic formula. The opposite of b is what starts our quadratic formula, and 2a is what's in the denominator of our quadratic formula. So maybe that's one way you'll be able to use this and memorize this. So the opposite of b will be the opposite of 8 all over 2 times 2, which is the opposite of 8, or minus 8 over 4, which is negative 2. So that's how I find my x-coordinate of the vertex. To find the y-coordinate, well, we can just plug minus 2 into our function and see what we get. So once we figure out what the x-coordinate is, plug that into your function. So we're going to get 2 times minus 2 squared is 4, plus 8 times minus 2, plus 6, which is equal to 8 minus 16 plus 6, which is equal to, well, this will be minus 8, minus 8 plus 6 will be minus 2. So my vertex will be, my x-coordinate is minus 2, and my y-coordinate was minus 2. So that is going to be you know, depending on whether this opens up or opens down, that'll be the either the very top or the very bottom, but we'll get into that soon. Now let's find the x and the y intercepts. To find the intercepts of this parabola or this quadratic function, what we need to do is follow the same techniques that we used when we were working with linear equations and linear functions. And that is, well, to find the y intercept, we know that the y-intercept always occurs when our input or our x-coordinate is zero. It will cross the y-axis when your x-coordinate is zero. So we can just plug zero into our function and see what we get. So my function, when I plug in zero, is 2 times 0 squared, which is just 2 times 0, plus 8 times 0, plus 6, which in this case we get 0 plus 0 plus 6, which is just 6. That tells me that my function, when I plug in 0, I get 6. That tells me that the parabola will cross the y-axis at the point 0, 6. That is going to be the coordinates of the y-intercept. Now think back to when you were working with the linear functions. To find the x-intercept, we plugged y equal to 0. So we, in this case, have our output equal to 0. Our y-coordinate is equal to 0 when our function 
is equal to 0. So the equation we need to solve is 2x squared plus 8x plus 6 equal to 0. This is why we have been practicing solving quadratic equations. Now you can use any of the techniques that we've seen before, completing the square, quad, uh, quadratic formula, or factoring in order to solve this. And we know that depending on the determinant, this function is going to either have two real solutions to this equation here, two complex solutions, or one real solution. So I'm just going to go right ahead and just solve and see what they are. And I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So remember the quadratic formula, opposite of b, plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. And I'm going to go through this kind of quick because we have seen this. This will be, well, my a is 2, my b is 8, my c is 6. This will be minus 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared is 64. Minus, well, 4 times 2 times 6. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 6 is 48, so that will be minus 48. All over 2 times a, which is 2. And remember, this is going to be x. We're solving for x when our output is 0. So I'm going to bring that down here. It'll be minus 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 48 is 16. That's good. We get a perfect square. That means we're going to have nice answers. This will simplify to minus 8 plus or minus 4 all over 4. And now we're going to have two pieces here. When you add those numbers, when you add minus 8 and 4 and divide it by 4, and when you subtract those numbers. So when you subtract, divide by 4. So one answer will be minus 4 all over 4, which would be negative 1. And the other one will be minus 12 over 4, which is minus 3. So since we have real numbers, we get a minus 1 and we get a minus 3. This is what x is equal to when my output is 0. So I'm actually going to get two points. When x is equal to minus 1, my function is 0. And when x is equal to minus 3, my function is 0. So just to recap here, we follow the same techniques that we used when we were solving linear functions. And that is to find the y-intercept, we plug 0 in. You substitute 0 in for x and simplify. And what we get, in this case, when we plug 0 in, we got 0, 6, and that's our y-intercept. To find the x-intercepts, we set our function, or we substitute y equal to 0. Now, that's how we did it when we were working with linear functions and linear equations. We just substituted y and 0. But now that we're talking about quadratic functions, we just need to set our equation, our output, which is f of x, we set equal to 0. And now we use, we know how to solve this in using lots of the different, me the different methods that we've discussed, completing the square, factoring, quadratic formula. And when I use the quadratic formula, I got minus 1 and minus 3. So my coordinates here for my x-intercepts are minus 1, 0, minus 3, 0. In this video, I've shown you that you do not need to graph a quadratic function to determine the vertex and the intercepts.